Hey guys, and welcome back to Corpse Party Blood Drive, and we're going to continue on. We just finished up chapter 00, and we're going to go through chapter 1 now. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So Blood Drive, chapter 1, returning. Cool. So in the last episode, we just went through all of Makina Shinozaki's stuff in her apartment, and we also woke up, we actually got our hand to open up the next day, or that night. And it had baby teeth in it, so pretty fucking freaky. So a day has passed since the events at Shimorenjaku South Apartments. This was to be a significant turning point for me, and Machida might have been part of it from the start, except that fate seemed to have other plans for him. Miss Kuan, I, uh, I, I have something pressing I need to get to, so if you'll excuse me. No, no, you'll sit down, Satoshi. Your score on that algebra quiz yesterday was rather embarrassing, don't you think? Like an owner training a puppy, Kuan gave him a strong glare and held up her index finger in reprimand. For the next hour, I'm going to give you a personal lecture, and you're going to listen, and then the next quiz will be a snap to pass. Miss Kuan, ooh, you know what that means, personal lecture, right, guys? Uh... But aren't you an English teacher? Isn't algebra a little outside your field of expertise? Uh, anything's possible if you put your mind to it. She seemed a little taken back by the remark and puffing her cheeks, uh, puffing up her cheeks like a chipmunk in protest. Um, but Miss Kuan, it's startling how alike she and Miss Yui are. If you guys don't know, Miss Yui is the teacher that went to Heavenly Host with them and actually died in Heavenly Host. So I'm sorry. Looking both bemused and guilty, Mashida tried to get up and leave his seat in one swift motion, but he was quickly and easily caught, lifted up, and forcibly sat back down. What? Uh, no. Miss Kuan was smiling. She was actually enjoying this. Who or what am I dealing with here? Miss Kuan was only the slightest bit taller than Mashida. This did make her taller than average, but her arms were small and frail. There seemed to be no way she could possibly have lifted someone of this build. This whole situation was rather bewildering for him, and he made no attempt to hide his confusion. <laughs> now, let's begin, shall we? <sighs> yes, ma'am. So it seems like Satoshi is stuck behind here while we go meet up with that new lady that we met last night. So he had no other option. Apparently, he was going to be studying algebra for the next hour, come hell or high water. I can't can't blame Satoshi. I mean, she's super hot teacher, super hot TA. Meanwhile, at a local cafe near the school, Kishinuma and I were sitting down to speak with Aiko Niwa, the informant who led my friends to me that previous night. Ugh. Are you all right? Does your stomach hurt? I responded with a dismissive gesture while continuing to rub my abdomen with my other hand. Ever since the previous night, I'd had this constant, unbearable urge to pee. What the hell is wrong with me? I mean, I know I got really scared and I hyperventilated, but I can't. But that can't be affecting my body like this. Did it change something in me? My bladder feels like it's fit to burst. So where shall we begin? Aiko tilted your head and stared at me, looking up and down, seemingly judging my every mannerism, my every movement. It was making me feel really self-conscious. I covered my abdomen with both my hands, as if guarded it from her gaze. Um, thank you very much for your help yesterday. Think nothing of it. I only regret that your friends couldn't get to you sooner. Kisaragi Academy is quite large, so it took some time to track down Kishinuma and the others. Kishinuma and I stared at one another, still unsure how to feel about this strange new addition to our entourage. Ayumi, Kishinuma, you two are survivors from Heavenly Host Elementary, are you not? <laughs> We pledge never to discuss Heavenly Host with anyone else, which we'd always assumed would be an easy promise to keep, seeing how no one remembers any of the people who died and no one realizes what happened in Heavenly Host. But now, casually, out of the blue, here we are. 
Why and how do you know about that? Well, you've been touched by the Ever After. The people who come in contact with the Beyond, the color of their auras changes to something otherworldly. Something I can see. Both Kishinuma and I were speechless. I just sat there, staring at my palm, subconsciously trying to see my aura. I guess Aiko was smiling at us triumphantly. Um, you said you were an intelligence agent? Was it for the supernatural? And you're a friend of Naho's? That's correct. I'm the one who tipped, off, or tipped her off about Heavenly Host Elementary, in fact. <gasps> The true source of the deaths and subsequent erase, uh, erasures that had turned our lives into a living nightmare was the Sachiko Ever After ritual posted on Naho's occult blog. Oh, so Naho posted it and then Ayumi had the great idea of doing it. I'd been a fan of Naho's for quite some time, so when I saw that, I knew I had to try it out with my friends from class 2-9. And as a result, half of those friends were now gone. I suppose you're aware that Naho was involved in the supernatural investigation on behalf of the one Mr. Kibiki, no? So, if you guys don't know, Mr. Kibiki was a supernatural investigator and Naho was his medium, and they both went into Heavenly Host, and she also acted as some sort of door for them to go back and forth, and eventually they couldn't get back out, and now she was stuck. I actually don't remember what happened to her at the end. I am, and I know she hasn't been or been seen since posting information at the Sachiko Ever After. Well, my business is of a similar nature. I gather information from the supernatural hot springs and other supernatural locales and sell the data to my clients for a fair profit. Not always money, mind you. Sometimes I'll do my dirty work in exchange for a particular spirit item that perks my interest. It all depends on whom I'm dealing with. It's entirely give and take. They want my information, and I want their cash and or artifacts. Physically, Aiko is a very attractive young lady, but personally wise, the jury was still out. Her words were calculated and emotionless. Her true intentions was a mystery. One could call me an information dealer, but I prefer an intelligence agent, and Naho was a good customer. My info on Heavenly Host po proved to be her last purchase. However, at that time, Naho was single-mindedly excited about Mr. Kabiki's work. She believed he could qualify for some award with the information I found for her. Say, could you tell me, was Naho there in the other world you found yourselves trapped in? She was. She was actually there. Naho died, together with Mr. Kabiki. That's what I thought. But I didn't want to say it and sound like an idiot later. I looked down as I answered. Despite everything she'd done, the memory of Naho's passing was still painful for me. She'd become one of Heavenly Host's lost souls and gone completely berserk. And in the end... I was the one who finished her off. I see. I assumed as much. Aiko seemed completely unaffected by this revelation. Her tone remained even and her expression cold and distant. Honestly, I ha I'd have enough of her by this point. She was so devoid of empathy. It was almost offensive. I was genuinely starting to get pissed off. And you're okay with that? I do feel sorry for her. Don't get me wrong, but I had a strong feeling things would end this way. There's no point in laminating that for which I was fully prepared for. Kishinuma continued to stare intently at Aiko with his own brand of cold, emotionless eyes. He was oddly quiet, though his anger was palpable. I clenched my fist. What about this girl? I believe she performed the ritual alongside Naho. Did you see her there as well? Yes, I did. Aiko showed a photo of a girl named Sayaka Onoe. So that was the girl that uh, was like her best friend that always tried to get her out to do things. And she, con she finally convinced her to do it. No, I can't say I've ever met her. I see. Aiko's expression was unflattering. You could carve it into stone. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to say something. 
if you're calling Naho your customer, I don't think you can really say you were her friend. My verse was my voice was breaking with rage, but even if that hadn't been the case, my face must have re must have read like a book. This icy bitch may have had only one expression, but I'm sure I didn't. Oh my, so do you have something against that word? Well, when I deal with my customers, I give them a guarantee of the utmost quality and dedicate myself to their satisfaction. It's an unbreakable bond of trust, like one would have for a partner, and that's not always something you could say about friendship, now is it? That's... I had no idea what to say. It all seemed like Aiko was used to this sort of thing. Her response felt... Carefully rehearsed, like a sales pitch. Finally, Kishinuma broke his silence. Hey, I do want to thank you for helping us save Shinozaki yesterday. Really. But spreading dangerous information just to pay the bills? How the hell can you sleep at night? <laughs> information is just that. Information. It's harmless on its own. There's no good or bad. It's it's like a tool. It's it's made up of its own recipient on our recipient on how it's used. It's up to the recipient on how it's used. Anything can be harmful in the wrong hands. After all, why the cup over there could be used to kill a man just as easily as any knife. The the hell it could. That's bullshit, and you know it. Ayumi, do you agree? Aiko, I'm sorry, but I hate the way you think. It, it, I feel so irresponsible. Her expression remained calm and collected overall, but her eyes blinked several times in rapid succession. It was the first outward sign of emotion we'd seen from her. Hehe, <laughs> well now, it seems we've come to regard it as something as of a villain here. I can't say this is new or unexpected, but it never ceases to be disheartening. Aiko quickly shrugged off her sudden outburst and was back to her usual icy self. It doesn't matter now. Anyways, we destroyed Heavenly Host. It's gone. An awkward tension filled the room, or at least the table. Let's get down to business. Then, there's a reason I sought you out. Something I wanted to discuss with you. Aiko produced a thick, hardbound file folder with a light blue bag she brought with her. She opened it several, or revealed several documents of questionable nature. Among them were what looked to be a family tree, as well as numerous pages featuring black magic symbology, or images that looked like tree branches. Black magic spell charts? And is that the Shinozaki family tree? You may find what I'm about to tell you a bit shocking. Aiko was looking directly into my eyes now. Her gaze was fixed and tensed and unblinking. What Kishinuma said a moment ago is incorrect. What? What do you mean? Heavenly Host Elementary has not been destroyed. It still exists, even now. The revelation. Take a look at this. All right, so that was the girl with her eye clawed out and if you like turned away from her, she would kill you. So Aiko placed a black and white photo on the table. It wasn't the clearest of pictures, but there was no doubt that the location it depicted was Heavenly Host Elementary. In the picture, a small girl could be seen standing in one of those all-too-familiar hallways, holding a hatchet in her right hand. It's... It's Heavenly Host. Where, where did this come from? We have confirmation, then. It's a thoroughgraph I've taken. A thoughtograph? A thoughtograph. I didn't have the proper... Or the power to produce a cleaner image, but this is the current state within Heavenly Host. I, I don't understand. What am I looking at? I can't even describe what was going through my head at that moment. I felt like I was about to burst. Aiko, however, remained calm as ever while recounting her story. Let's start at the beginning. First, the red box from yesterday. After some time, I was able to open it, and I found these spirit items contained within. 
What do you guys think it's inside? I'm gonna guess bones. The box found on Makina's uh, uh, futon. Inside, it were to appear two stones resembling Magatama, a comma-shaped ceremonial object from Japanese antiquity. Also included in the box were several more roughly ho uh, hewn stones, as well as lining along the edges consisting of crumpled paper or crumpled pieces of thin white paper. Unfortunately, I guess I'm wrong. Unfortunately, most of the box contents were broken or damaged. This pair, however, was still fully intact. Oh, that's a symbol. Look, if you guys look at the bottom of the text box and in the intro scene, this image is everywhere. So when we get to the bottom here. Okay, Aiko now held one stone in each hand and was motioning them towards one another as if to drive them to one point. So you see that on the bottom? It just goes bloop, 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 bloop. It goes like in and out. Pretty cool. Spiritual items are, in the simplest terms, items which have been infused with the thoughts and feelings of the dead. Those who bear such objects will be visited by the spirits within them, or at very least be forever privily to their memories and their earthly laminates. It's a wonderful thing. I may not look the cart, but I'm actually quite an avid collector of spirit items. Why? Kishinuma and I briefly locked eyes again. We shared the same look of bewilderment. Aiko's personality was much more twisted than either of us had initially perceived it to be. I tried to get a fix on this little girl's thoughts, and in doing so, I heard a vengeful cry and saw an image of a girl with braided hair in an abandoned school building. So that was the girl with the hatchet. And that was the girl that was in that room that would kill you if you looked away from her. Or looked, or looked at her, I think. Uh, my, my memory's fogged. It's been four years since I played that game. My curiosity has been piqued. I took out this camera. At this, she produced an old instant camera and placed it on the table in front of us and tried to take a photo of the image in my mind. The result is that photo. This particular spirit item only allows me to produce images from the exact moment in time when the picture is taken. The past and future alike are beyond its reach. I examined the, photo uh, the photograph in greater detail and a chill ran down my spine. There was absolutely no denying what I depicted. No, it was actually, I was actually shaking. Without Sachiko Shinozaki, the school should have collapsed. It should have ceased to exist as soon as we escaped. I believe the collapse was halted, perhaps right on the brink, even maybe because of the person to whom that voice I heard belongs. Aiko mentioned towards, or motioned towards the photograph in my hand. It could even be that this girl, in this photo, I wonder who it is. The answer was beginning to dawn on me. A sudden cold sensation exploded through my body and I shuddered as this I was trying to shake off the encroaching realization. God damn it, you really think that hellhole is still around? Kishinuma leaned forward. The conversation was clearly beginning to engage him a lot more than it had been. Heavenly Host Elementary, or rather, the dimensional space that took the form of Heavenly Host Elementary, fascinated me from the moment I introduced it to Naho. I began to research it independently and learned that its true identity is, well, something like a new nirvana, a netherworld, or hereafter, an otherworldly plane of death. Though ordinary, one tends to think of there being only this world and the next. A new nirvana? That's correct. You know about Yoshi Shinozaki, do you not? Yeah. And of her clinic, the Shinozaki Estate, where in the grimoire known as the Book of Shadows was located. Yeah. Why? How could she know about that? A million thoughts, a million questions were running through my head. I was speechless. All I could do was sit there and hear her out. Seiji. It was like a muffled scream or a moan of agony. The sound you make when you want to make a sound but you're barely able to. That one is a little more forceful, accompanied by the thrashing it caused the nearby light table to fall over and 
roll along the ground. Please, dear, come now. You need to stay calm. This was Yoshi Shinozaki's clinic, and Yoshi herself was on top of her husband, holding him down with both of her hands. She continued her Shinto purification chant. To prevent Sheiji from biting off his tongue, he had been gagged with a towel. Needless to say, he wasn't looking particularly well. Not far from where this was occurring, Sachiko stood against trembling as she watched the proceedings with hesitant sidelong glances. So Sachiko is the, the girl that like is the main character of the Heavenly Host, and also the victim of, and the perpetrator of the incident in Heavenly Host. Izanagi no Okami, who visits the underworld and beholds our foul spirits, guide us to cleanse waters of the Tachikibana on the Odo no Agihara shores in the land of Tsukikishi. So that's her, that's, his husband, that's her husband. Seiji, still collapsed on the floor, was clearly suffering. His body was bent in an utmo, in a most unnatural shape and was fer fervently clawing at his neck. I beseech thee, in the name of divine virtues, of the gods gathered here, to wash away the sins we've committed and the impurities that dwell within our minds and bodies. Sachiko's so father screamed through this gag, foam beginning to form out from its edges. He was going to go into cyanosis. cyanosis. <laughs> Ghostly images of Shinozaki's woman from past ages past smiled down upon the event from the ceiling, laughing and mocking his suffering. Worse still, some of the women had traditionally blackened teeth, giving their smiles an unintentionally sinister edge. The atmosphere within the room was heavy, as if spirits occupied every empty corner, dancing and flitting about freely and joyously. <laughs> Seiji's body sharply bent and began convulsing. Come on to this world, multidinous Okami of Haradayo. Dear, stay with me, dear! Mioma no Mitama, I beg of you, please do not take him. Her great-grandmother, Seira, the head of the Shinozaki family, was among the black-teethed women laughing joyously at Seiji's suffering. Daddy! Daddy! That was the death of... His, boy, his voice began to weaken and his convulsions began to lose strength. Finally, the last spark of life had left his body. His eyes rolled back of his, in the back of his head and all movement ceased. Daddy! Why aren't you breathing? Sachiko looked up, eyes glazed over her tears. Yoshi too was stricken with grief and despair. This is what it means to be a Shinozaki, to be part of the cursed bloodline. All men who marry in are guaranteed to die quickly. Not even Yoshi could circumvent that fate. So she turned to the forbidden book, an item she and her family had been protecting for generations from those who might misuse it. The grimoire, the book of shadows.